Welcome to the podcast where we track down Australian war veterans, have a chat with them and hear their stories. I'm Alex Lloyd and this is Life on the Line. The Bible was the rule of the day. My jaw was broken. I could feel my molars in the centre of the mouth. We're in a tight country. We're out there. At the end of the day, everyone is their job. wearing green is a soldier. Kidding yourself blown up does some interesting things to you. Yeah. Uh, a place like the Middle East is constantly there's changing. The what we do there is constantly changing. We killed, though. And this, the thing was our own minefield. He held me up with a broken whiskey bottle and machete. Welcome to today's bonus episode of Life on the Line. Today is another interview from our archive vault. The interview, conducted by Angus Horden, is with World War II veteran John Reed. We interviewed John on 5 August 2011. John went to Knox Grammar School and was taught by a few influential teachers who are all Great War veterans. In today's first highlight from the archive interview, John recalls an incident with Knox founding headmaster, Neil McNeil. Yes, he was a very strict disciplinarian. He was always in the background and spoke, and he was very, very keen at all times to get the most out of uh, boys um, and just emphasise the desirability of discipline as a means of attaining this. And I can remember all the boys were sort of equivalent of cleared lower deck, I suppose, and formed a square and poor unfortunate Clive Clifford was pulled into the centre of the square and uh, expelled, as I recall, for having sworn. Uh, so it was pretty rigorous <laughs> training. You mentioned that the discipline that you received from yep. McNeil and the others helped you a lot early on in the war, especially. Oh, yes. Discipline is... is one of the vital things that unfortunately I feel we lack in today's society um, in just about every form, but more particularly at home, and that's a bit of a tragedy because it provides the strength uh, to advance, uh, to uh, achieve stability and progress. It's uh, just fundamental. One of the most unique parts about John's wartime service was that he took a movie camera to war. John was on the crow's nest of HMAS Napier when HMS Barham was torpedoed by a German U-boat. The magazine was hit, resulting in a tremendous, horrifying explosion. The Barham was one of the three main capital ships of the home fleet in the Mediterranean, so it was a serious blow to the Allies in 1941. Besides the official wartime videographer, John's footage is the only known film of the event. An archive of it is kept at the Australian War Memorial, but the footage has not been widely seen before, at least before our documentary. In this next clip, John is describing the event and watching the footage as he speaks. The bar on the battleship has just been torpedoed. Uh, she was listing to port, hit on the port quarter, and we were ordered to go alongside it. But as we were closing with Nizam to take off survivors, she was hit by a further torpedo and the magazine exploded, as you can see. And it was a horrifying sight. And so uh, we had originally been, had, had it delayed, we would have been alongside and we would have also been part of that plume. As it was, uh, it was just before we got there and it was a tragic, uh, attack, uh, about 860 uh, killed out of the total crew. It was an, regarded as an outstanding attack and it was carried out by U331. Captain was von Tysonhausen, German Navy, uh, and uh, he was certainly uh, decorated for that attack. And that meant that at that point of time, the whole of the Eastern Med fleet was in a parlous situation, was, as I've mentioned previously, with Cunningham at his wit's end and uh, 
uh, many cruisers and destroyers uh, sunk during the evacuation of Greece to Crete and from Crete. So, uh, and when the two battleships in Alex Harbour were then put out of commission, having already just lost uh, Barham and the same class, uh, we, were, we had no capital ships at all left at that point. So it was pretty serious with a reduction of uh, cruisers as well. John, I recall you mentioning that with the Byram that you saw the sailors diving off the deck. Yes, yes, that was, that was very sad because when she was still, before she'd uh, exploded with the magazine, and I had my binoculars trained on it and you could see crew running down and diving over the side uh, while she was still afloat. But unfortunately, some I could see were diving from the starboard quarter, the starboard side aft, and they had not realised or had no, no alternative because they were diving onto the exposed submarine torpedo, at least submarine bulge, that was um, a fabrication of additional uh, hull below the waterline and it protruded out as a protection against torpedoes. And of course, when you're listening to port, the starboard side is exposed and um, that meant that the chaps who were jumping or diving over the side onto the uh, steel deck so exposed the bulge which is a bit tragic, so it was, you wouldn't believe that anybody could have got out of that at all, having seen it, but uh, in fact, I think there were about 400 or 380 that survived. It is amazing, John, because when the hood was hit in the magazine, yes. only three got off. Yes, quite so. And, and it mustn't have been lost on the Navy that there were two battleships yeah. that had gone up really when the magazines had gone Yes, up. yes. Oh, the hood was, uh, that was absolutely tragic and uh, it just highlighted the necessity of giving it when you're doing refits to refit all areas and it was reinforced in the hull structure but as I recall the deck structure had not been reinforced and consequently Bismarck's salvo had come down onto the deck and penetrated there and that um, went uh, that ignited the magazine and the whole thing went. That was a premium battle cruiser, the major unit of the fleet, really. And when that went, that was very serious. And of course, at that time, uh, with the North Sea and the degree of cold temperature, anybody falling in and being in there longer than about five minutes would not be there, so you just, it was, it was tragic. Many people were obviously in the water, but all succumbed, unfortunately, to the cold before being rescued. So there were only three recovered. John's footage was not just of the Barham. John was part of the Crete evacuation, the Tobruk ferry service, and later trained as a submariner. He has an array of amazing footage which we heavily featured in the documentary miniseries for School and Country. The documentary was produced by Thistle Productions, the same team behind this podcast, www.theschoolandcountry.com. Thanks for listening to this bonus episode of Life on the Line. For more on this podcast, visit us at www.lifeonthelinepodcast.com, where you can also email us and find our social media links. And if you know a veteran serviceman or servicewoman with a story to tell, please get in touch. We would love to have them on the podcast. Life on the Line is brought to you by Thistle Productions. Artwork by Big Cat Design. Music by Dan Van Werkhoven. Thanks for listening, and lest we forget. Mm-hmm.